Load balancing is a common method of taking information coming inbound to a single device and distributing it to multiple devices simultaneously. So you can have web services that you're providing, and everybody on the internet thinks they're hitting one web server. But in reality, you have a load balancer, and you're distributing the load across multiple servers inside of your environment. Generally, we call that grouping of multiple servers a cluster, so that we can have a reboot of a web server. We can add and remove different servers in real time during the day. And on the internet, nobody knows that anything is going on because this load balancer is making sure that we are distributing the load only to the servers that are up and running. We see this commonly in very large environments. If you don't have a very busy server, then there's no need to distribute that load. As your environment grows, as your business grows, as more people need access to that device, you may consider splitting it up and using something like load balancing to make sure that everybody has availability to those those devices. And if you have very high speeds, a lot of bandwidth that you need, load balancing is a great way to make sure that everybody has access to those resources. You'll sometimes see this implemented in something called CARP. This is the Common Address Redundancy Protocol, C-A-R-P. And this is where you would assign the same IP address to multiple hosts. Normally, of course, you would never do something like that. But when you're using this redundancy protocol, that's exactly what you do is assign all of these IP addresses identically to multiple devices on your network. And you would set up the configuration of these hosts to know that they are all communicating as one big cluster. This methodology is very common to a proprietary protocol that Cisco created called the Hot Standby Router Protocol so that they could have multiple routers on the network with the same IP address. And if a router failed for any particular reason, the network continued to run normally. This CARP is something that you commonly see implemented in the BSD operating system. So if you're running BSD or you're planning to use CARP, then probably want to use an OS that already is familiar and understands this routing protocol. You often see ARP implemented in operating systems like BSD. BSD automatically understands the CARP protocol. So if you're bringing up multiple web servers and you want them all to participate in this cluster, the common address redundancy protocol is already ready and available for you to use in the BSD operating system. There are a lot of different ways to do load balancing. Maybe you're load balancing based on a distribution. That's what we've talked about so far, where you've had 10 servers in a cluster, and you're simply distributing the load between all of those different servers. You also have ways to distribute load based on the content that's coming in. Maybe people that are pulling in streaming video from your servers are going to a completely different group of devices. The people that need the static web pages might go to a separate group of devices. So you don't have to distribute the load evenly. You can even do it by the type of content that happens to be coming in. This is a simplified view of what load balancing might look like. And you have to start with a load balancer. This is something you can do in software. But almost always, when you have an environment that needs a lot of bandwidth, you've got a lot of requests coming through, you're almost always implementing this as a piece of hardware that's been specifically designed to maintain the throughput of the network. You need a, a piece of hardware that keeps all those packets going at full speed. As people are coming into the internet, they're hitting the load balancer. And you've configured this load balancer to be able to load information evenly across different servers. Maybe one server gets a bulk of the requests, and other servers are there to handle the differences between them. And this load balancer is also able to keep a health check of all of these devices. It is constantly checking into those servers to make sure that they're available. If you happen to have an operating system fail, if the power supply blows out on a particular server, the load balancer immediately recognizes that. And it makes sure that it only sends and manages requests to the remaining servers. Conversely, if you wanted to add more servers into this mix, the load balancer can be configured to automatically recognize those. So as your network gets busier during the day, you simply add more servers into the load, and the load balancer distributes between them. And as the requirements shrink down again, you can turn servers off, and the load balancer recognizes those changes. The load balancer is a relatively complex piece of equipment. But as you can see, it can be crucial for maintaining the availability of these high bandwidth and very important applications.